welcome everybody to Let's Talk Geek, episode 75. In today's show, well, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? So we do have two <laughs> guests with us tonight. Um, so before I get to uh, our regulars, we've got James, editor of My Gaming. We've got Creepy. Luke, <laughs> Hi. Uh, otherwise known as Fried Roadkill. His claim to fame is he won a prize from us yet last week. <laughs> I'd like to think it's more than that. <laughs> Did you ever get I, I'm the resident troll of the IRC, come on. Yeah. Um, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the mail. And the Eva Johan Els. Oh, we're not mean to like a, a regular. Feeling. I'm Jan Vermeulen. I write for my broadband. You can go and hate on me la there like everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're in RC. You can join us there. You need an RC client. Please don't type this URL into your browser. It will go nowhere. IRC.LTNet. You should go nowhere. <laughs> IRC.LTNet.TV. I'm pretty we'll sure probably go really to our website. <laughs> we'll go to the internet. <laughs> That's very nice. Okay, I've closed, <laughs> it. I've closed it. I've closed yeah. it. Does it actually do something? All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, let's kick it off. We've got some. We've got an event today. Um, and it's today. It is Blue Beanie Day in support of web standards. Uh, yeah. You discovered that. What's uh, Well, I mean, I discovered it and told you about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whose standards are we supporting? Hoping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whose RFCs? Yeah, yeah exactly. In the, and, and what do they call them in the CSS spec? Whatever they call them. And none of us have blue beanies. so yeah. He's got a blue shirt, so that's fine. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Go Flash! <laughs> you're welcome to wear a beanie in this heat. No, not a chance. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, and a uh, quick plug for stardates.co.za for all your geek events. Um, are, are there any events coming up in Stardates well, at the moment? I mean, it's winding uh, down. It's winding down. I don't think there's anything actually in Stardates for this time of the year. Except for Christmas Day. Um, but we'll keep on trying updating it as we get things. Cool. Um, there are a couple of people that decide to hold conferences this time of the bloody year. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. But we'll keep trying to update it. If you've got any, ad any events coming up that you know about that we don't know about, please let us know. We'll add it. Cool. For these first timers to start it, it's a Google calendar, so you can actually just link Been it into. Here before. <laughs> so you can actually just link it into your own calendar, and you get these little pop-ups of nice geeky stuff that happens. Um, all right, so we've got from the IRC somebody clamoring for the Johannesburg Google G Tug. That is correct. I forgot about that. That's coming up this Saturday. Yep. Um, it will G -tug. be G Tug. G Tug. Yeah. Google Technology Google. User Group. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, there are also other events happening this weekend. LG is having some sort of gaming competition and stuff, but it's not open to anybody. So, well, so what's the point of that? Well, no, they've no, already no, no, done no. the trials and stuff. No, okay, uh, but can I tell you what the actual story is? You can still get in. There's three mystery spots, mystery <laughs> spots, which you can get into by going to the Santon City Expo and trying to qualify there. At Formula One 2011, uh, the grand prize is a trip to Australia for two to watch the Grand Prix in VIP style or a television if you come second, third, or fourth. You're a gamer. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got invited. I was like, no, too busy playing Battlefield. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, an, an, awesome, an awesome massive TV is, would mm. be great. I mean, mm. 3D, 3D whatever. TV. But 3D that TV. IPS panel. Mm. Mm. Sexy. I'll take it. Anyway, so that's happening anyway. in Santon for anybody who wants to go through. Cool. Uh, getting right into the topics. Uh, a lot of security stuff um, uh, to you know, in today's show. So first up, uh, WhatsApp. There were some vulnerabilities in WhatsApp, which um, a guy called Andreas Kurz uh, reported to WhatsApp, and it's been fixed. So um, this, this seemed to involve being able to spoof um, pin verification, or bypass it, rather. So, um, yeah, they, they uh, reported the, the bug. They detail it quite nicely, um, it, the, the links in the show notes, about how they did it, and um, that was promptly patched. This does not fix the WhatsApp issue where it sends messages in plain text, as far as I know. So um, we've actually got one of our, one of our uh, regular watches and somebody who, who's been on our show, Quentin van Royen, um, who, who did some digging in WhatsApp and um, found that it sends all the messages in plain text. So if you're on Wi-Fi, people can see all the, the messages coming to and from you over WhatsApp. So just be aware of that when you're using Wi-Fi. But what he never answered was, is it only that messages? I mean, if, uh, I mean, WhatsApp is brilliant in doing photos and other stuff. 
would you be able to actually intercept that information? Yeah, yeah. And, and well, it's not encrypted. So, yeah, you just find the front, start of the file, end of the file, and yeah. off you go. And the interesting thing is it's, it's literally plain text. There's no protocol or anything. Like, I don't see Jabber protocol or anything like that. It's not a standard it's protocol. It's just, <laughs> it's just plain text. Anyway, I see a very important question in the show notes. Has anybody paid for WhatsApp? I haven't even used WhatsApp. So. I haven't paid for WhatsApp. <laughs> I installed I mean, WhatsApp. So in the little terms and yes. conditions, you'd have to pay for it eventually. After, yeah. I was like, no, no not installing that. So <laughs> that but I mean, it. I'm just asking, has anybody actually paid for it? Mm. So there be no? Uh, for people who have used it for longer uh, than yeah. a year. No, yeah, well, I can't answer I mean, that. I has anyone own, used it for more than a year? Is a I actually question. still owe Walkies so. like 20 rand so you can pay for it. But uh, I'll remember me Walkies. I'll give you the money. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> I haven't heard of anybody wow, actually paying for it. While we're on the topic, um, one of the members of our forum has actually uh, drawn my attention <clears> to the fact, I don't know if anybody's come across Viber. Uh, Viber is an application that runs at the moment on Android and iOS, but nothing else, which, which is like a major advantage to WhatsApp. It pretty much runs on, on everything. Um, and what it gives you is Skype-like calling, um, but without an account. So it works like WhatsApp does. It, it actually works on your cell phone number. And then you can have VoIP, you know, you, you know, yeah. a lot like, uh, so it's like, the, it's like Skype meets WhatsApp, basically. And so, um, but they have a presence on the My Broadband Forums, epic plug here. Um, but it's cool to, to see them, you know, and, you know, responding to questions on the forum and stuff. And one of the questions that came up is, listen, for people who are sensitive to bandwidth usage, is there a way to turn off VoIP? Um, you know, when, they, when they're not on a, on a Wi-Fi connection or something like that, and just have texting. Or something, you know, would, or, or a light that, version yeah. of Viber for just texting. And the Viber guys said that they're looking into it, and it's an interesting proposal, and blah blah blah. So it's well, just quickly, two things on WhatsApp. Uh, yes, Hawkeys, you can stick it to G Talk, but G Talk on mobile doesn't support group chatting. Doesn't include any attachments. Yes, but you can use G Plus Messenger for that now, and that works on mobile. On, yes, on as far as I know, it's got group chats. Yes, we're done the epic huddle, man. The yes. but the on the browser, I'm talking though. on your mobile. No, on your mobile. You can have a huddle on the, on, on your mobile. Okay. We have then the I'll epic huddle. It's still ongoing. Everybody just left. <laughs> well, then what's the difference between the groups and the huddle? Oh, wait. The groups allows you to do like voice chat, isn't it? The hangout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's no hangouts on mobile. Okay, okay. Yeah, as far as I know, not yet. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. G Talk Messenger now supports all of that. Yeah. But it's okay. also only on two platforms. Once again, uh, these cross platform chatters' biggest strength is it runs on BlackBerry, it runs on Symbian, all the stuff mm. that us techie geeks no longer use. Um, <laughs> hey. But it, run, it runs on that. <laughs> well, you still no, got a Nokia. Got no, the BlackBerry. Got a BlackBerry. Oh. No, I was referring to Symbian, actually. Not you know, this apparently, this is a, the only market in the world where BlackBerry is still growing. Yeah, doing well, apparently. Um, it's, it's a, I mean, and it's obvious why. Uh, yes. There's nothing quite like flat rated internet mm. to drive sales. Internet Moving swiftly along, private browsing doesn't do anything. Is this another incognito mode in, 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 in Chrome? Yeah. In Chrome. So Chrome has incognito mode and uh, Firefox's private browsing mode and I doesn't Explorer do anything. Has, yeah. I mean, IE's got its own thing. They all have their own version of private browsing slash porn mode. Um, and the reason it's known as porn mode is quite simply because <laughs> the only people you're hiding anything from are the people who come and sit at your PC. So the, your cookies and browsing history <clears throat> are not logged when you use private browsing mode. Now, for those of us who, knows, who know how pr private browsing mode works, this is an obvious thing, you know? Yes, you know, it won't stop key loggers. It won't stop yes. people snooping on your stuff. It won't stop malicious websites. Um, so, you know, it won't stop spam. You know, it, all it's gonna stop is local site stuff. But I mean, wasn't that supposed to be the idea behind it was a, a sandbox environment? So yes. any Anything that gets downloaded in that session actually just gets deleted when yeah. you. But so there now seems it doesn't to be a it. message going out yeah. now. Sorry. Uh, no, don't Luke, worry. Yeah. Uh, um, go for it. I was just thinking about oh, a while back we had those things of like unkillable flash cookies. I wonder if those. Yeah, yeah. Super cookies. Yeah. I wonder if those things get deleted by incognito mode. Um, so that would be an interesting thing to go and to, have a look to at. To go and test. Yeah. yeah. Um, and anyway, so there seems to be just, I think, a general misconception that these guys are trying to address. Now, now I wouldn't know. Um, because I haven't really spoken to techno weenies about how they use private browsing mode. But these guys seem to think that, you know, people think that it's absolutely private. You know, No, it's not supposed to. No. No, it's, and it's you want a sandbox. Yeah. It's more a sandbox. And so mode. what this message is about is just warning people, listen, all it is is a sandbox. And okay. don't forget that. All right. Yeah. That's a big difference between the two. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So... Um, all right, I have to have a Yun rant. This is my segment of the <laughs> show where I rant about things. This will be short. I now use a Mac for work. You can berate me all you like. The, the, the reason Boo. is I need to compile <laughs> Mac apps Boo. for my broadband. And you can't, 
Upload apps to the uh, to the app store or compile apps without a Mac. End of discussion. Wasn't <laughs> <laughs> right. much of a rant. No, come no, no, on. no. Now, um, so it, so it, before I, I switched to Mac, I made sure that everything I could do on Ubuntu, I could do on the Mac before I decided yeah, to yeah. do. So um, the RSS reader I was I'm not using playing games. Now, can you, no. Is Grummel, yeah. <laughs> and I use Grummel because it links into my Google. Don't you reader. want to say that again? Not playing games. Good games. Any good games? Any games. Yeah, I Diablo know. three, World okay, of Warcraft, okay. most, Starcraft most two. good games. Blizzard fan. <laughs> 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 it's like the only good games Mac people have. Okay. Like, and so four and stuff, but you can't get and the... And SX, SSX Tricky, I think. Uh, well, okay, oh, we'll we'll get to anyway, <laughs> Photoshop's not a game. The Mac is taking... The, the Mac is getting a lot more games. But anyway, so I've been using facts. Rummel for RSS, <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize how slow it made my PC. On the 13-inch Mac, I, I barely noticed. I, I got a lot of spinning beach balls of death, death on that thing. When, now I've got this 15-inch monster with an i7 processor in it, and, it, and it, my Mac was still sluggish, and I couldn't understand what was going on. I was about to slap Ubuntu on it or, or Mint because I was just getting so frustrated. And I literally swapped out my RSS feed reader from Grummel to NetNewsWire. Why would you not be using Google Reader? Um, I, needed, I need an app to run in the background um, because Chrome is such a resource hog. So I want okay. something that doesn't memory leak. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> interesting. Okay. My RSS mm. speeds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, and so Grummel. Oh, actually, for offline reading. Yeah. Yeah. Grummel seems to lock the 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 window manager <coughs> in oh, in Mac, so it's a really badly behaved app. I don't know what it's doing. Well, that's strange because it wasn't that the whole ecosystem of Mac is to actually ensure that the apps are. No, I mean, there's no may, maybe on the on the mobile side, but on PC side, there's very little you can do. Okay. Yeah. So, cool. Um, this is actually a question for parents around the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. yeah, but um, how young is too young for someone to have a cell phone or smartphone? You know, it's becoming a, a very debated point as a parent. Um, at what age does it, is, is suited for cell phones? My my personal standpoint is if she can't read, if she can't read and write, what's she going to do with her cell phone? Um, I made this comment a couple of months ago, just after HTC announced that they officially allowing you to change a bootloader. Well, I'm still waiting for somebody out there to actually go and write us an Android version for parents. Okay. That will give you that you can go and buy a phone and actually load a custom Android like Syn uh, Synergy Mod that has got big buttons, SMS only, no MMSs, maybe switch on or switch off the damn camera because that's the biggest problem with kids with, with these phones is that the photos they take sometimes is not what they should be doing. Mm. But it's still not happening. So. Right now, I don't know. Um, I see that the discussion in this uh, in the link that you'll put into the RC are yes. uh, talking about eleven years old. I would say that's too much, too too late. That's too late. Unfortunately, the real world today. I mean, when we were children, we, at what age did you guys go and sleep over at a friend? Yeah, mm, I mean, like early. school, yeah. Okay? yeah, yeah. Mm. When I started having friends, exactly. Mm. So it's already becoming an issue. You want to be able to get hold of your daughter or your mm. son. Mm. At that age, so you're looking at actually seven, eight. You want to start. But you don't need to give them a uh, you know super smartphone. You can give them those hundred rand yeah, pieces of junk. Do you want to? Well, why wouldn't you? You want to give them an Android. Well, <laughs> get them in on the Android. No, early, I mean, far, uh, <laughs> can't wean them onto an iOS later in life. Or yeah, 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 exactly. You need to early. Yeah. Well, we had those junky. Uh, coming from like a security standpoint, we had these little junky devices that we used in KwaZulu Natal where. Mm. It calls one number, mm. so you just make it the parent's number. True, true. Yes. You know, I, it has I no screen the, or anything the cheap like that. Those phone. things are so expensive. Well, and so limitless. I mean, it's, why don't just give me a give me a, a, a HTC Wildfire? Is that right? Mm -hmm. The small yeah. phone. Yep. Just give me a custom ROM on it. Damn it! Something that that gives me those features because now I can do it in software. Mm. So it's a it's a good question. It's an absolute good question, and I'm still waiting for somebody out there. Just give us a custom ROM for parents. That will that will eliminate the risks mm, about mm. phoning the wrong people. So the yep. phone book just blocks down. It only gives five numbers. You can phone me, my wife, or my my parents. That's mm. it. Mm. SMSs can only be received from these five numbers. Anything else, forward it to my number. Let mm. me see what else SMS in my daughter. And in the South African context, even having that, like, must to some have sort a GPS. Brand, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, good having, point. Yeah, having that linked to some sort of phone brand. You know, you can make this phone really unattractive for thieves. If they see the, this kid, you know, your daughter has this junky phone that he knows won't, you know, won't do sell. anything else. Yeah. Just make it yeah. bright orange. Then you'll see people <laughs> stealing the damn thing. 
But yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. It's a long debate between parents. I've, we've had it at having a couple of beers at a bri. We start talking about it. Sure. But yes, um, interesting. Yeah, indeed. 11, I think, is too late. Okay. Um, while we're talking about uh, about parenting and technology, um, we'll are we back with me? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. The, there's there's a thing called Predibirth, that it's a software package that that some researchers have have come up with after after now putting in the legwork in the research, being able to predict, you know, trying to predict whether a birth will have complications or not. And uh, they've, they've used a lot of, um, you know, there, there's a lot of variables that they've analyzed. And so now what they've tried to do is distill it to simple measurements they can do with something magnetic. Let me click the link. Pelvimetry? Um, what? <laughs> no, it's not just sonar. So that's one of the, um, sonar is one of the, one of the input Sorry, variables. our mixer that shall not be named <laughs> is adding some comments on the side here. We've added out having a microphone. <laughs> so we've got a relay. Yes. So, um, <laughs> So Very they're nice. trying to take the guesswork out of, uh, out of this kind of thing. And I mean... I'm not going to comment. All right, fair enough. Uh, but the, the, the fact is, if you look at the statistics, uncomplicated births are actually in the minority. So it's interesting technology and... It uh, will be good. I'll, I'll quickly, because I don't want to get stuck on this. My yeah. eldest daughter was born 10 weeks premature. So yes, there was a major complication, which could have uh, cost me my daughter and my wife. So if there was any way to predict that situation... Unfortunately, um, these, still see, these type of methods can also cause panic. Sure, sure. So there's a very fine line between having that information available and it might be wrong and then causing panic and then actually inducing a problem. <laughs> so good luck. I'm done with kids. So. Cool. For you well, upcoming parents, yeah. have a read. Any, anyway, and uh, for those, for, <laughs> for just to conclude the geeky part of this, they use magnetic resonant images. Uh, to do this, the better known as sonar. MRI, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better known as sonar. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving. It is sonar. Along, NASA wants space. Uh, wants a space washing machine for now the you're jumping ISS around and now. Mars. I am jumping around. Okay, now you're confusing all Damn of us. Damn you, Jan. <laughs> what do you want to do to wash underwear? Yes, because apparently astronauts wear their underwear for three to four days at a time. I think that's, that's all I want to say. Nothing wrong. wrong. Nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Standard guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got space. the sweetest pad, I suppose. Everything's cleaner in space, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's just move along. <laughs> <laughs> and how much can you possibly sweat in okay. space? Okay. Is it one of those things, again, like the old story about the pen in space where you just use a pencil? <laughs> I mean, why don't they just take enough underwear along? How long do they stay up there? Well, the weight is an issue. Long. Packing all your underwear on the space shuttle on the way up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose that's I a good place. Like, yeah. um, one, ten. One for each day. Same You're right. up there for I months mean, uh, at a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, imagine. Exactly. So that's the next one parcel. One space suit, one set of undies. That's, so that's all you a, need. That's the next parcel. You know, when they, when they, they do the change around and, and, and food exchanges at yeah, the yeah, exactly. national spa, what the International Space one Station. One fresh pair of underwear. Yeah. <laughs> fresh well, underwear. No, no, yeah. It's more like <laughs> four because you need to make it last a few months. So yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. Just don't go waste. Uh, well, it's not our tax money, but don't go and waste American tax money on that. Like the old story about the pen. Yes. Um, except but isn't that a myth? It's, it's, it's yeah, bunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are space pens. I own one. <laughs> but Does it How? work in space? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm not <laughs> Does it work upside down, Jan? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly why they okay. wanted it. So right, cool. Can, yeah. Anyway, um, so mm. that brings us to the end of the geeky edition of the show and into the gaming edition of the show. So there's, there's a, a lot of gaming <laughs> topics in the rest of the show. So shows. basically, if I can summarize, this, this <coughs> December Christmas holiday shopping is not going to be around new hardware, but it's going to be around games. What new hardware do we get out for the con for, uh, for gaming? Mm, nothing really. But Mi Microsoft, uh, coincidentally, you bring it up, they reported their best sales ever for Xbox this last week over Black Friday, over the whole sales period oh. there and they um, still got the dvd drive in them yeah yeah, yeah. It's same old xbox uh nine hundred thousand units shifted so best in the last week of week. sales yeah and most of them about seven hundred fifty thousand of them were on the friday wow uh Shit. and there, were, there was also a ton of connect sold i can't remember the number off uh, off my head yeah but uh, and, and i know there was a big a big nut, a wee deal i think at best buy or something um yeah we didn't and nintendo didn't actually said that, that they, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't mm. because, I mean, who cares what Best Buy does, but um, apparently Nintendo, um, they, they lost money on that. Okay. Yeah, so they sold it below cost. Okay. But again, because they make the money up on the games. Mm. 
True. Get and uh, Nintendo was one of the few, well, the only console manufacturer that actually made profit on every console, console. sold. So, uh, no, so they were making money from day one. Didn't they, season. didn't they lo- launch the black console this year? Yes, it's yeah, it's basically it's a the same black thing. Version. But I mean, it's a black version. There's, there's a slight, there's a there's a stupid difference. I think it's not backwards compatible with something. No, some old games, uh, GameCube I, games. I always like. find it defeatist. I mean, it's a console. You buy the console for the game, and then they say, no, it's suddenly not going to work anymore. And mm, mm. and me there, as yeah. a PSP user, this is what hacked me off about the newer generations of PSP. Mm-hmm. But just so, to come back to my point, so yeah. basically this Christmas season, we're looking at buying games, not yes, really consoles. Yes, uh, I mean, consoles will always sell. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, if you don't have nothing, a console, you buy There's one, nothing new. Uh, in Japan, new. unless you live in Japan, there'll be a PS Vita on sale. PS Vita? Mm. What is that? It's the new, uh, it's the PSP2, basically. Yeah. It's new handheld gaming. Yeah. But I mean, well, they while we're talking about it. But yeah, that's why I'm going to stick on it, yeah. if you don't mind. No, is that right? go for it. <laughs> cool. Let me I know it's your show. No, 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 you're jumping around. Yeah. Let me move it up. Move it up. Cool. But I mean, Sony, <laughs> Sony Ericsson just launched that phone, which is... Uh, oh, the Xperia Play. Xperia the, Play. Yes, that's, that's not the same thing. <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> not, in, not even close. Okay, so what's it's, the PS Vita? Oh, the PS Vita is a, is a handheld gaming Replacement thing. for the PSP. Yeah, it's basically the PSP2, next generation. Okay. They're calling, they're calling it the next generation portable. That's mm-hmm. its other name. Um, what does it feature? A touchscreen on the rear for... Um, a touchscreen on the rear? Yeah, so it's like a, like a mouse touchpad sort of thing. So uh, you can uh, interact... A touchpad on the Yeah, rear. yeah, not okay. a touchscreen. Uh, they call it a touchscreen, but it's not really a screen, as you pointed out there. And... Uh, <laughs> It says here, six axis, motion sensing, yeah, the three six axis, axis, compass. Is it running Android? 12 buttons. No. No. It'll be Why? Running there whatever. was rumors that the next console will be running Android. From I Sony. also remember those rumors, so I'm quite Rumor being the operative word there. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. I, know, I realize that. But I mean, why don't these guys just go and op- I mean, grab on Android. Load Android on these things. Mm, yeah, they have enough trouble with people hacking their operating system. So well, their games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Piracy is issues. Piracy on the original things, yeah. PSP was rife mm. because they worked out how to uh, hack well, into the thing. Well, and the PS3, you know, yeah. I mean, remember the whole saga True. a while ago uh, with the guys hacking it. Um, anyway, so mm. the Xperia Play is a phone, uh, and it's quite remarkable that it can it can play all these old PS2 games and uh, p- some PSP games that they're going to port to it. Yeah. But uh, I don't think it's very cool as a gaming device. It's a, it's so. a start point. Yeah, it's something. It's cool. Um, it, at least it's got a built-in like proper controls. I hate gaming on a phone, a touchscreen. Yes, yes. So at least it's got hard keys to press. Yes. You know, so that's that's a good move. So what's okay? So quick ones. What's a? I mean, it looks exactly like the old PSPs. Um, we'll so have to bring the up the, the specs. I actually, you caught me off guard here. We can bring up the specs in one of our articles. But uh, well, what's your question about the thing? No, what's, what's, what's the improvement? What's Why the do you want the new PSP? Well, well the, the, the six axis. That a, looks new. It's doesn't, doesn't the, the PSP have six axis? Uh, uh, it originally only had the left analog yes, stick. Yes, uh, but six so axis is not what you're thinking. Uh, the right analog stick is a, a new addition, which is great for um, you know using the camera in a game or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's, the, the beauty of that is they're going to port All a lot of... camera. Uh, yeah, controlling your camera. So normally the left oh, analog yes, stick yes, is yes, moving okay. and yeah. the right analog sorry, stick right. is controlling. Six axis, Six is, axis is the motion control. The motion control, yeah, sorry, I was yeah. thinking of the analog So it's got built-in motion control. It's got, it's got control. tilt sensors and stuff, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's supposed to be about as powerful as a PlayStation 3. So um, I would doubt. But yeah, it does say it's quad core. So yeah. interesting. Well, somewhere it did. So five inch, I could be five, reading wrong. Five, what? Come on. Don't sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Four core, five, five Four and core big RAM. A9. There you go. Well, all of those specs don't matter because it's not no. running an operating system. No. I mean, well, it's going to run the games. That's yeah. it. Has it got well, any... It, it, it has social features and, and oh, browse the internet. Front and back and camera. And yeah, yeah for, it, it's, it'll do video calls. It, it's not a phone, but it can through... Uh, Wi-Fi. Through the various Sony um, social interfaces I mean the, that they have. The older there. PSP had Skype support, so yeah, they're just might, extending that. It might have Skype yeah. support. Uh, well, I'm sure we, if, it, if it does Wi-Fi, see, then mm, why not? Yeah, and 3G, of course. Yeah. Uh, and on that note, we've got we've now uh, found out that uh, your PS Vita 3G edition will have to be recurred when you buy it in this country. Yes, uh, makes sense, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, it's got a built-in SIM, so just be prepared. <laughs> we but still what you're saying is this has been launched in the um, in the Eastern market, but we'll only yeah, see Japan it gets it in December sometime, I think, and okay. uh, it's launching in Europe. 22nd of February, I think, uh, and we fall under their sales sort of region, so we'll be seeing it around that time as well. When? Uh, around 22nd of February, I think, was the Oh, so next there. year. Yeah. So back to this Christmas sales. Yeah. So games. unless you live in Japan, yeah, mostly games. Mostly games. Mm-hmm. So which games? Uh, most of Come the games Come, you've got you the first yeah. one. Come. What now? Well, most of the big games PSP are out. No, what no, any games. games. 
Say game. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tell yeah, us about your game. Well, Jan's the thing is, the game, that Diablo game's 3, only yeah. coming out next year, so you can't buy Sometime. it for your kids. No, that's not out yet. Uh, yeah. You can't buy it well, for your kids. Well, you're not buying it for your kids because it's got a 2218 on it. <laughs> it's adult content. <laughs> Playing Diablo 1 when I was like 10 shaped me as an individual. <laughs> there you I, go. I turned out fine. Right? Mostly, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> the Twitch in your <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, um, my gaming has a Diablo 3 beta key, yes. which I've been able to play with, um, with the uh, under the the promise that I will write some articles for them. So that still needs to happen. Um, <laughs> nothing. I doubt tonight because we're going to leave here so late. <laughs> but uh, that was the idea. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I've been playing. I started with a monk. Um, and then went to the wizard, and then also messed a little bit around with the demon hunter, um, mainly because my gaming's already covered um, the other th the other three classes. There are five classes, and so um, I need to cover the monk and the wizard at l at the very least yeah. um, with my playthroughs. And um, yeah, and, and it's it's really I've been having an amazing amount of fun with the game. So for for those of you who've never played Diablo three, it's mm -hmm. a top down isometric action RPG, they call them. So you run around and you click on monsters until they die. And that sounds a lot more boring than <laughs> those of us who love this stuff really find it because there's all kinds of interesting dynamics to the game. Um, so now for the guys who have played Diablo 3, here are the key differences between Diablo 3 and some of the other games. The skill system works completely differently. The resource system works completely differently. So for example, the skill system, instead of having a tree that you spend points on as you level up, um, you unlock the skills as you level up. So it doesn't matter what character you are or how, you know, or when you level up or how you level up, you always unlock the same skills. And then you get to choose which skills to equip your character with. You only get eight skill slots, six, seven skill slots, a limited number of skill slots. <laughs> um, and you unlock those as you level up as well. So you start with two, and then uh, um, the highest I've got is, is to three. Uh, I think you unlock your fourth at level 12. So... The, the, the progression in that regard, you know, is, is also quite interesting. You, you actually walk around with a, with a fairly limited number of skills in the early parts of the game. Um, and uh, the resources are also uh, different between every class. Now, in the older Diablo games, everybody would just have mana. Now, for example, your demon hunter doesn't just have one second resource to health. It's split in half. He's got what's known as hatred and dis discipline. Mm -hmm. So and he recharges both differently, um, and the monk uh, uses um, something holy energy, hell or something, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the wizard, which you would expect to use mana, doesn't uses what's known as arcane energy, uh, a resource that's rapidly recharging because she spends it really quickly. Yeah, um, and now what's interesting in both the monk and the um, demon hunter's case is that they've got. Uh, separate sets of skills that generate this resource and then you can s other sets of skills that you can spend the resource with. Okay. So uh, discipline, for example, on the Demon Hunter recharges, whereas hatred you generate. Um, so um, the, the resource on the monk, by the way, is spirit. Um, and you, you also, so you attack, you know, with your okay. super monk skills and spirits. And so that's very different. Just in general, I mean, is this a world entry and then you run around in a world or is it... Story based, or is it? How, how does the game actually progress? Um, it, it's very similar to other Diablo Diablo games. The story is very light, so you, it's it's very environment told. It's a very environmentally told storyline. Okay. So you run around and you experience the story. It's not a book like other okay. RPGs. You'll pick up tomes all over the place. Diablo is pretty much just like, like Diablo okay. Two then, because it's it's traditional. It's more like Diablo One, and oh. I like that. This okay. is this sort of okay, feels but like you, you enter this world, you run around. Yeah. You, you, you find stuff, you do some quests, it's the same, that sort of genre. Yeah, sure. yeah exactly, it's that RPG-ish kind of genre. But okay. uh, maybe you should just add multiplayer there as a key component, yes. and the new Battle.net. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, the new Battle.net, which okay. launched with StarCraft 2, it's obviously going to plug, plug into that, and more than that, those who don't remember, Blizzard actually started a controversy with Diablo 3 when they announced that Real it would news. have no offline mode right. at all. There's no offline single player, even though there is single player. But you have to connect the to that. Yeah. Okay. And no land, of yeah. course. Everyone's up in arms about yeah. that. Yeah. And so the reason they gave for that is um, that they, and please don't say piracy off the bat. <laughs> That's <laughs> a secondary reason, but not the, not the primary reason. Um, the, they said that basically they want to make it so that players will by default have Battle.net characters. And if they either want to play online, 
that they don't have this offline character which they can do nothing with. Okay. Well, and that's what uh, happens. They, they also said controlling the well, user experience. Yes. Um, you know, they can monitor cheating, I, uh, item duplication, all that good stuff. Great. And all the fun parts. Great. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And of course, <laughs> there's uh, the new auction house where you can, and that's actually quite yes. a big feature. Uh, you can now. Uh, start up a PayPal account. You can grind items in Diablo and sell them to people for real world money on Diablo 3. Ooh, yeah. So, so they that, that is right in the bud. They, they take a cut, of course. Blizzard takes their cut. Through, for, but through they the the fees. prices. Um, no, the market, so to speak, will uh, dictate the prices, Always the in game economy. Sir. Well, not but really. this is I how they've been doing it in um, games idea. like Eve Online for How are they going to prevent mining? No, so well, the, the, the thing is, yeah, I mean, who cares? Actually, the if thing you is, want to do that, if you put it as ahead. a legal um, mechanic within the game, yeah. then you already start to clamp down on that kind of behavior. Okay. Because any player can do it. You know, I can see uh, armies Mr. of Chinese, Chinese prisoners yep. grinding Diablo exactly. 3 items and selling it to fund their strange desert constructions that they're building at the moment. I mean, that was a like big me. problem in World of Warcraft. Yeah, they still is, spent yeah. a lot of money to try and clamp that yeah. down. Mm -hmm. Now but they're going to actually... Now they're actually going to do it in yeah, Diablo. Yeah, they were like, well, guys are going to do it anyway. Let's just bring it in house. Okay. Makes sense. Well, and they take a cut. Let's the control profits, the experience. So, you Make know. sure there's, you know, <laughs> clamp down on scamming, you mm. know, all kinds of stuff. People stealing accounts. Well, uh, I mean, being a World of Warcraft player for a while, it's, 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 it's quite an irritation when you're running around in the world and you've got people trying to sell you gold for real money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how the hell? That's, that's not what's going to happen in Diablo. Yes. You're going to yes. have people coming up yeah, to but you it's say, legit. hey, you want to buy some money? Yeah, yeah. And but it's, it's legit now. So it won't be like, you know, back alley, a guy in a trench coat, hey, you want to buy some wild gold or some Diablo gold. You go to the auction house, you say, you can see what the current uh, exchange rate, yeah, yeah, okay. market value is and think, hmm, I need a thousand gold to buy that item I want. Let me just drop $5 on it, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, another thing about... Um, Online gaming, which I hope they get it right, and that's it was actually a frustration of Battlefield 3. I've got a notebook and I've got a desktop. I've got the game installed on both because sometimes I don't have access to my desktop and I still play the game. Flipping character doesn't transfer between the two devices. Okay, well, that won't happen on any Blizzard game. Um, yes, it does. On it Blizzard, does it doesn't on matter. WoW. You, you have that realm problem on WoW especially. Mm. So yeah, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter on which device you log so in. I hope no, no, at no, least as long as you log into the same realm, sorry, yes. yeah, then yeah. it should be fine. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully they're going to do the same with Diablo. So yeah, whatever yeah. you've achieved yeah. on your desktop, yeah, if you move to your mobile, yeah. Yeah. Now, now that's the nice the thing about Battle.net. The only problem is that Absolutely. I've noticed in StarCraft, for example, is that your replays aren't saved to the cloud. Yeah, uh, so your replays are stored yeah. on the machine that you played on. That's a bit sad. Um, yeah. Isn't there a feature to upload them, though? You can No. Isn't there? No. Okay. You have to transfer but let's move maybe. along. Cool. Anyway, moving All right. along. So That's one game. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on to number yeah. two. Um, uh, well, for, before we move on, there's a question from IRC that I'd like to give attention to. And I'm, let's give it a shout out as well. Mickey D was asking, um, are there any really different games coming out this, this holiday season? And um, mm. like I have to say That's off the bat, very good question. If, that is a very good question. If, if you want to yeah. look, you're going to have to look at indies. But yes. I don't th can't think of a single AAA title. That's sort of uh, breaking I've got one. mold. In yeah, yeah. Um, I've got one. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there now. Okay. You're not going to say. Not you're not going to say Star Wars, are you? Come on! <laughs> That's not indie. <laughs> That's a new game. It's yes, an MMORPG. It's not I a mean, new concept. Yeah. yeah. It's like almost a. The way code. they're approaching it is just new. Is it? It's an yes. MMO with and Jedi Star Wars. in it. I mean, come on. Star Wars. <laughs> How old is the Star Wars franchise? Like I'm a it, It's older than I am. <laughs> I played a damn um, uh, 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 bounty Wookie. hunter last night. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, be a bounty hunter. Look, Star Wars is amazing. Oh, yes. But I would not classify it under new, uh, new no. IP. New IP, no. I just wouldn't classify it under that. So, I mean, I okay, can't good think, point. I can't okay. think of anything. Is desktop dungeon dungeons coming out of, out of beta? But that, not even that's new IP. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's nothing yeah breaking the mold, but they're yeah. sticking with what they know. No, but um, when it comes to indies, you won't know until it's launched. Yeah. that's the other thing. So they don't really talk to anybody, or they don't because yeah. they don't, they have limited PR um, power. You know, mm -hmm. they only really get big when the game hits the market. Mm. So well, on indie, um, if you want to try indies, what is that humble indie bundle? Yeah, those are great. So mm. yes, and there's please, also the um, indie royale is uh, a new indie bundle that's uh, started to take off recently. Similar um, idea. It almost yeah. feels like they have a new one every week or yeah, something. Yeah, well, so well, they, they really this, are. Yeah, um, this time around, it's with introversion games. So, yeah. so oh, you don't yeah. know those, DEF CON. Um, hmm, the Darwinia Indie Royale Multimedia. actually is a bi-weekly, not a bi-weekly, what is it, every two weeks? Fortnite. 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 Fortnightly, yeah. there we go. Um, a fortnightly thing where, uh, again, depending on how much people have paid, uh, the standard buying in price goes up or down. And if you spend more than the 
the average at the time, you get some extra games, which encourages people to spend more. And so I guess it also gives the them exposure and to... Yeah, exposure to... And yeah. that's what they do. They, they actually launch new indie games uh, that's very nice. through that. So, yeah, it's a cool way to find out about these games. And they're really not expensive. You spend, like, $3. Yes. Or uh, whatever you, you want. Or whatever, or or whatever yeah. you want, really. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Okay, but okay. Um, Johan, have we covered Star Wars in sufficient detail? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want to? Then since no, we mentioned okay, that, quickly. Okay, just quickly. I, I was one of the lucky guys to get the beta key. Yes, it was an 18 gig download with some one or two patches. I downloaded it and didn't play it. I was playing Diablo 3. Um, <laughs> so but I terrible. must say, it, it was a very enlightening experience. Um, the fact that you can now play those characters that you grew up with in the movies. Um, what's interesting about the gameplay is the fact that um, Constantly, f where e other MMOs far as a storyline, and you you do action, and you either get it right or wrong. Um, Star Wars is is emphasizing multiple responses. So mm -hmm. I mean, every interaction with other characters, you've got three responses, and they gauge in some way some AI service. Uh, if it's you're playing a Jedi, the way you respond in your action of of mm -hmm. completing tasks is the way that you will either go to the dark side or stay on the light side. So you can start off as a Jedi and actually then end up at, on the good side and then end up in the dark side. Mm. Now, this is interesting because I read an Ars nice. Technica piece mm. on this because you can play Jedi or Sith. They've yes. got the standard factioning mm -hmm. system built into the MMO, right? No, so people are like Jedi or Sith. Empire. 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 Oh, is it not Sith anymore? Uh, One of the races... Yeah. Uh, oh, is the Sith. Yes. Okay. Well, it's okay, not really okay. the Sith. It's called something else, and I can't get into the game anymore. Okay. <laughs> but the way I understood it, the Sith was going to be like in there, and the, and the first question was, how can you be a light side Sith? And the answer, <laughs> and, and, and it was interesting, because if you, like, it's an incredibly lovely and geeky, because if you delve into the history of Star Wars, the Sith weren't originally just bad guys. Um, <laughs> it, it's a name that was applied to the Empire dark side um, Jedi you know, yes. afterwards, after the fact. Um, so it's actually a faction. Yes. Let's and not have a Star Wars geek conversation. There. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. But yes, fair enough. Go read the Oz article. I've that was got cool. to say. I've got to say. If they are, they talk about including this into the Origin um, platform. Oh no. Oh, uh, dear yes, it goodness. actually wasn't going to launch with Origin as a prerequisite. You're right. But okay. But luckily, the beta. It's not. It's a standalone, yeah, so you don't need to drag it in there eventually. But if they put it into Origi Origin, forget about it. I'm out. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, they they got so many clauses in the whole thing. You know, the Eulers and whatever it is that you agree to, either in the game or using Origin, that they could probably just smoosh them together one day. So I'm just saying. I mean, let's yeah. stay out of Origin. Origin. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe we've all got forced what is into your Origin. Problem with Origin? I'm actually. I don't really have a problem with it. It works for me. Um, um, it is a, a nuisance. It's yeah, amateur. A nuisance. Sure. It's amateur. It's too yeah, young. Yeah, definitely. But you so all got to start somewhere. The, so um, yeah, you got to start somewhere. And then why are you forcing us into this? I mean, mm. for hell's sake. I mean, a lot of the EA games are already in um, Steam. That's that's matured. I mean, I'm sorry. Steam works. Didn't they definitely. yoink a whole bunch of games from Steam? Yeah. Do you get yeah. it on and version? a lot of the uh, Battlefield 3 is the big one. Battlefield 3 is the biggest so one. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I promise you if I walked when, when I bought the game, if I actually noticed that one little point, I would have left it. Because Thing is, yeah, if, sure. if, you're, so uh, if you're running a business and now that guy down the street is selling your product for you, but he's taking a cut, whatever it is Steam takes, let's assume it's 25% of the revenue. But if you want to take um, on Steam, then launch of a, pr a mature product. Well, Steam Origin. started out and it was pretty crappy as well. So, you know, yeah, you Origin is a lot better than Steam was when that started. You, got, you can't play catch up at this stage. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, true. You can't. It, it works for me, though. I, I haven't had a problem with it. I installed it. Yes, there was, you know, it was a bit of a pain. But, I mean, I, I load it up. I play Battlefield and it just I mean, launch your game through so. a web browser. It doesn't uh, feel it natural. So cool, it makes sense no, to me. Not. It makes it's perfect creepy. sense. <laughs> so you open up Origin, then you select your game, then you open up a browser. Well, that, that's, and then you for Battlefield, your game. that's for Battlefield 3. You actually, your interface with your, your character, it's your, not Origin, your soldier. It's, it's Battle Log. Battle Log is. It's, a battle, it's Battlefield 3's separate. online. Yes, yeah, sorry. Battle no, they can no, take no, but, some tips Okay, but let me guys. tell you, it makes perfect sense because if you're going to launch a very detailed system like having soldiers and you know linking people, it's almost like a Facebook of sorts, the Battle Log, because you, you make your friends and you create your groups and you do this and you do that and you launch your games through there i mean why not use an existing platform such as a web browser which everyone's already worked out mozilla whoever they've got that technical side of it working and you just need to hire coders that can okay. you know code for a web browser right. and implement it 
quite well. And well, they, it they do have works a, well, a third-party so. plugin that has to yeah, run. Yeah, there's a so plugin. There is a little service that needs to run. But in order can you imagine if EA to. had to code from the ground up a system like that? That's like us all built in. Because if anyone who played Bad Company 2 remembers, the server browser was absolutely <laughs> terrible. Was horrible. And that's what you would have had for Battlefield 3. So I'm actually glad they went this route because it worked. Yeah, yeah. Well, to me, it's just interesting to see the, the, the ongoing trend of moving everything to the browser. It, I mean, mm. and it, it's a move towards like real cross-platform stuff. So all of a sudden, your, your networking layer runs completely cross-platform except for one little plugin that you have to write. Mm. So you could very easily, you know, you know, if you've got the game client and stuff moved over to the different platform, you don't have to worry about the networking layer. You just have to worry about moving the game client over to Mac, for okay, example. Okay, well, mm. well, let's see what happens. Okay, but that's my one anyway, area, grab. Yep. The second one that I can say, which is amazing, which is other MMOs I've ever played, um, the voice interaction. Mm -hmm. and that's I mean, Bioware then, bringing that quality element to yes, the game. It's very nice. Yeah. It's very nice. It's just, and then I can say I saw Jabba the Hutt last night. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, not Jabba the Hutt, one of his cousins, but it doesn't matter. His cousin. Another Hutt. <laughs> Worked for <laughs> two and lushly um, dressed uh, ladies. <laughs> like, oh, it was beautiful. The screenshot button doesn't work. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> it was part Perhaps. of the NDAs. It was, no, it was uh, part of the NDA where they said they're not going to allow any screen grabs for... And you were supposed to not publish it. Especially because people are going to no, find the bugs. Just download, snag it, and go click, click. It's done. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. Otherwise, very good experience. I think it's worth it. Um, haven't looked at the pricing, and I'm quite worried that when you try and log in now, they tell you wrong region. So I hope South Africa is going to get it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that is a worry. I don't know if we mentioned that. We, we addressed it uh, previously. I mean, I, basically, it turns out it, it looks like they're not going to block you. Well, um, how long did it take us to get WoW servers down here? I mean, we don't, don't have, have any WoW servers. WoW no. servers still. But WoW access... I mean, no. you, you we've could, had it from day one. Yeah, yeah, but you had to buy it online. There was no retail package, okay. basically. Was, was the well, only thing. You no, couldn't buy game cards without a credit card. You yes. could not play WoW, was the bottom line. And it looks like that's going to be the same uh. thing for Star Wars. Huh? Why, why do we have Guild Wars 2 on the screen? Because we're going to... That's the next one. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, yes, it's on the you, list. You need to Jumping remember the, the mix is primer from yeah. last, from last <laughs> uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. But that's anyway, the wrong low. Is it No, two? that's Guild Wars 2. Is that see, two? Here's um, the two, see? So just <laughs> quickly, it looks amazing. The video link that um, uh, is in the show notes, just watch it. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It showcases dynamic events in Guild Wars 2, and it looks amazing. And it shows neatly what the differences are between Guild Wars dynamic events and Rift World and Zone events. Mm. Um, so I don't want to say much more than that because I can't do it as much justice as the video does. This is a, looks like a community member that's gone through the effort of just summarizing everything that ArenaNet has said about it. So it looks really, really good. Um, mm. So uh, uh, do, do you want to... I just want to mention it. Okay. We were <laughs> hoping we'll have somebody that can go into depth. There's a big World of Warcraft patch release that's happening, actually. It happened yesterday. Mm. Um, all the between Panda thing. Well, uh, the next batch Mr. release. Pondaria. No, that's not out yet. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the next batch release. Um, there's a lot of upgrades and stuff. Obviously, they're seeing... I think they. it's going to be good that something like Star Wars, the Old Republic, is going to give them some good competition. Yeah, there we go. In that market, and we're going to see some good improvements on Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft. If you haven't got the patch yet, good luck. Because <laughs> generally, patch releases from, from Blizzard are big. So have some fun. <laughs> Cool. Um, and then into the, the big one for the evening. And we've already almost run out of time. So um, hopefully we can do it justice. But there's been well, a, a ma major piracy yeah, thing. Uh, well, ugh, I mean, it's always a major thing. Maybe I'll just summarize quickly. First of all, Ubisoft came out and uh, was crying about piracy. Uh, they're not going to release Ghost Recon. Future Soldier for PC, they blame piracy. Uh, there was something lost in translation due to I Am Alive, that game that sort of was announced many years ago, then died out and got resurrected. Um, the French developers uh, was interpreted as saying they're also not going to release it for PC due to piracy, but it turns out something was lost in translation there and they, they might still release it for, to PC and piracy is one of their major concerns, so they're focusing on console at the moment. But it sparked off this whole um, debate again around piracy and everyone now hates on Ubisoft because, oh, terrible DRM that you have in your games and it forces me to be online all the time and it you know, makes it difficult for me as a legitimate customer to enjoy the game thoroughly. Meanwhile, people who have cracked the game are playing freely with no troubles yep. whatsoever. Um, and so people obviously have the same argument for DVDs. Uh, when you buy a DVD, you've got all that unskippable stuff before you can mm. actually watch the DVD. Yes. If you download the movie over a torrent, double-click play, on goes your movie. Well, 
this has been an ongoing discussion yes. throughout the movie it just, industry. It, it and just resurges every now and then, and it did recently, which is why we thought, hell, let's uh, Aren't have another crack at it. these supposed to just relook at their business models? Well, uh, yeah, you bring that point up. Um, Gabe Newell, old Gabe who ate all the pies, Newell, uh, from <laughs> Valve Software. Well done, you've uh, just caused Half-Life Episode 3 to be delayed another two years. Delayed, it's not even announced, but let's not get into that. Uh, he said... I'm still waiting, yeah. Piracy <laughs> is not a problem for Steam because um, of their service model. They, they look at piracy not as a criminal problem uh, that they need to you know, combat with uh, hefty DRM schemes and so on, but more of a service delivery problem. If um, I think he quoted here, I can't quite find my quote that I wrote down, but anyway, Gabe said something along the lines of, if the pirate uh, down the street or on the internet can give you the game within hours of release, cracked, working 100% or whatever, and you tell all your customers around the world that there's different release schedules per region and you're going to need to be always on internet and you're going to need this and that to get it working, then obviously the pirate is offering a better service and people are going to go to him. If you can offer them a great service such as a, a well-priced game through Steam, which is you know digitally downloadable straight to your computer, you don't even have to put on pants and go out and buy it, um, you know, <laughs> then then you might uh, nice. buy your game through Steam, and yes. Steam does te you know terribly well. And I buy a lot of stuff on Steam. They have specials all the time. Uh, games I would probably never have bought. It's so convenient. It, it's so convenient. You just think, oh, a few dollars, let me just buy you it. You get a new notebook from the office. You actually install Steam, and you go click, 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 mm. you install, you go to bed. Next and, morning, um, all the games are there. And somewhat backing him up was uh, the CD Projekt guys, who are also, uh, they're the sister company, they're developers and not publishers, they're developers. They developed The Witcher 2 and The Witcher, obviously. CD Projekt is a publisher, CD Projekt Red is a developer. I something think? like that. Yes. Anyway, they're from Poland, and their sister company is Good Old Games, uh, who is known for selling DRM-free products, and they sold a DRM-free version of The Witcher 2 through Good Old Games. Now, that the, the developer did some very quick math on a napkin, and he estimated that they probably uh, had a piracy rate of about four and a half to one, four and a half to five to one for The Witcher. So they sold one and a half million copies of The Witcher, two, and um, they had uh, like five million to six million copies pirated. So mm -hmm. they, they guess. Um, but they say DRM is not the way because you offer the customer a good product with lots of incentives to purchase it. Uh, the standard edition of The Witcher 2, for example, came with a great art book, a walkthrough guide, uh, some you know other little goodies in there. And this was standard price retail. And it was a really attractive package. I bought the collector's edition, as did Yun. And even that was really well priced. And it has a fantastic art book, a bust of uh, the main character, all sorts of cool stuff. And I really don't feel hard done by purchasing that, unlike uh, Duke Nukem Forever, <laughs> collector's edition. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, his point is that you know, coming from Poland, where it was ingrained in society, where basically uh, the culture was to pirate software, they didn't give a stuff about purchasing it. What they started to do was add value to their products so that people would actually buy it and they tried to change habits and so on. And now Poland has reduced their piracy problem somewhat. Uh, so yeah, he's proving the point. Mission accomplished. Put out a good yeah. product. It doesn't, <laughs> DRM is not helping, it's just hurting, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the other takeaway is PC gamers are angry with Ubisoft for essentially casting them aside, saying we're not supporting your platform because it's not generating us money. And a lot of people Probably say it's it should be about, fueling the, piracy it should be about well. the games and putting <laughs> yeah. out a good game yeah. Yeah. more than just the bottom line or something we, like that. So, we'll, You've all played Angry Birds. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's free. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry. Mostly. Not well, not mostly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, not on your iPhone. What on my Android phone it is. But I mean, does that, that ad, ad that pops up in, on the game are really irritating us? So why don't these developers just don't go and flip and make, strike a deal with, um, with uh, uh, Google and start placing ads in the game. You can't survive in Google ad revenue, unfortunately. Well, uh, so Angry Birds is very different. Angry Birds is very, very different. Battlefield Heroes, for example, this is an EA game, and uh, it's not available in South Africa, but it's ad-supported. Uh, it's free. Yeah. It's basically a sort of cartoonified version of Battlefield, but there's in-game ads, and that's how it's supported. So, you know, the big publishers are looking at this sort of model. Um, I mean, one day you work. might play Battlefield 4, and there's a big Coca-Cola sign, and then you can shoot it down with a rocket launcher. Exactly. Because they'll have Destruction 3.0, and uh, <laughs> it'll be cool. So, yeah. They must really just relook at this model. And, mm. and, I mean, the, the, the movie houses and stuff, just they just got to get to the same story. Yes, a Coke can and, and an old movie like uh, 300 is going to look funny, but <laughs> yeah, find right. the damn solutions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did want to mention one thing, and that's that um, <laughs> the, 
there, there's there's often a, a sort of thing where people will you know protest by pirating, and and I would argue that mm -hmm. that's the wrong way of going about counterproductive. Things. So for example, I mean this isn't the first time that Ubisoft has slighted PC gamers. Firstly, I think they released Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed 2 late on PC. Um, yeah, they made a it habit a out of it after late. even yeah. Assassin's Creed 1. Yeah. I think. And um, secondly, I mean, and that's just Assassin's Creed. Never mind all the other stuff that they've released late on PC. And secondly, they released Assassin's Creed 2 with always on the DRM, DRM that streams content down. You don't actually get all the content on the disc to install. It streams it down as as you need it as part of the as part of the and copyright protection. You screen. have to upload your save progress, and if your internet connection dies, you just lose all your progress. And yeah, geez, there was so yeah. many issues. So, yeah. any, but but anyway, and so there were a lot of people who in, you know to oppose this. They said. I will pirate this game now, and, and I'm going, you know, the worst damage you can do to a game developer and, and to anybody who's poured their heart and soul into a work of art is to not experience it at all. And so it's a, it was the same argument with, with Modern Warfare 2, in my opinion. If you're going to pirate it because of the, the whole land scandal, you, you're actually proving nothing. Mm. Um, if you want to prove a point, then when somebody asks you, hey, man, what do you think of this new cool game? You go... I ended up not playing that because I didn't like the DRM scheme or they removed land. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, well, like I agree. You must just do that more and yes. then the point will get driven. Yeah. And, and, and then, I mean, the worst damage you can do to them is obscurity, yeah. not, not by taking their stuff. Well, them. I agree with you to a, a point. I think the bean counters uh, at Activision HQ or Ubisoft HQ or mm. whatever will say, well, it looks like it's not selling very well yes. on PC. Why bother developing? And, it's not, and they won't say, hmm, I wonder why it's not selling well. Mm -hmm. They'll just say, well, let's just focus on console because that's where the money appears to be. Yes. Uh, so it might not work. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't know how you approach it. Well, what is interesting is Ubisoft <laughs> tried an experiment, but it wasn't entirely fair. They took that Prince of Persia game, mm, the, the, the cell-shaded yeah. one, and they, and they released it without DRM. Mm. But the problem is, is that's no... I mean, it, it was a AAA title, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't like a franchise. Tri uh, I don't know. It is a franchise, but it's not like no, a well-marketed title. No, but it wasn't part title. of the original yeah. franchise. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's not riding on the back of like massive it was, hype. It was like a strange yeah. reboot. Yes, um, yes. And so, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of stats they pulled out of that, and they're very mum mm. on the stats that came out of that game um, in terms of PC sales. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually very sad. That was a fun game, yeah. by the way. Very yeah. sad to hear, I mean, because it would be really cool. I mean, they've run this experiment. While the statistics might not be indicative, you know, of much, it would still be interesting. And depending on the results and how you analyze the results, it could mean something. Yeah. But because they're mum on it, um, you yeah, know, it's, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. anyway. So uh, moving on from that, another bugbear of mine is this common preconception that BitTorrent equates to piracy. Um, and so... May I? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars Old Republic download is HTML do HTTP download from their web servers. So yes. when I started the download, I was getting a lack of 32 kilobits per second. Oh. 18 gigs, here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the World of Warcraft client has got mm. a built-in BitTorrent support. Mm. So if you ever need to get the World of Warcraft client for whatever reason, you got BitTorrent. So you'll get it from all the other guys. So mm. yes, Blizzard has gone and said, well, but Torrent's a good platform. And they yeah. use all the games, by the way. The updater in StarCraft works that way. The updater yeah. in Diablo works that way. All their updaters. And it even makes sense from a business way. point of view. I mean, you don't have to host these hefty the files, files exactly. somewhere yeah. and let everyone else host it. Suckers. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yes. And, and so, I mean, the reason I bring this up is, uh, okay, and, and maybe this isn't entirely fair because I was not an eye store. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm fitting the 15-inch MacBook Pro trying to make sure it'll fit in my bag. And walking out the door with it, um, and not, not really, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm talking. Nice say, bag nice with, say, uh, nice bag with the uh, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling the the store attendant. Listen, you know, uh, you know, StarCraft had real issues. You know, it, was, it just works thing. You know, it didn't just work. I struggled getting Steam installed. I struggled getting StarCraft two installed on on my MVP. Um, mm. You know, so whatever, it doesn't just work. I mean, the, the app developers can still screw up. It just works for you. And so eventually, I ended up torrenting StarCraft, just straight. Instead of using the Blizzard downloader, which didn't work, I just got a torrent and downloaded it from everybody else, right? Mm. And his immediate association was that I was playing a pirate copy of StarCraft 2 because I used the word torrent. Mm. And that's wrong. Like, uh, and, and it's unfair to BitTorrent to have got that stigma, I think. Um, Unfortunately, that is what it's used for the most. Uh, yes, but so what? But, I mean, given the context of StarCraft, you have to log in to play the game anyway. Yes. So torrenting it is a non-issue. Yeah, it does nothing. <laughs> I still can't play on Bnet. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, that and now leading on from that is that we discovered uh, today that uh, not only does 
uh, that BitTorrent has recently launched live streaming. So peer-to-peer -peer live streaming, which is great. But we've also recently discovered that um, you can actually stream something while you're downloading a video or a, or a piece of music. So, and once again, this isn't just for piracy. There are plenty of, of places to get legit free content using BitTorrent. Let me paste the link in the show notes. Vodo.net is one of those places. Very, very cool. We're, we're actually watching a series from there, a mini series from there called Zenith, which is a uh, very tinfoil, hatty, conspiracy theory kind of series. Very cool. So feel free to go check that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, BitTorrent does some really cool stuff, I think. Mm. Agreed. Well, that's been the biggest, the whole thing about uh, fair uses policies was around BitTorrents yeah. or peer-to-peer -peer networks, uh, like somebody corrected us, uh, I see. But I don't know if there's any, can, can somebody tell me about another peer-to-peer -peer network that's successful? Well, they, they, they were successful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, LimeWire. Well, if you mean now, then no. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was LimeWire and Kazaa and, and, and Gnutella, I think it's still. Oh, Napster. When DC, last, yeah. DCC Napster plus plus. Napster now does legal stuff, eh? Um, another, they're uh, still around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the site's still around. I think they sell music. Mini Nova, which was one of the world's biggest BitTorrent indexes and trackers, has gone legal as well. So that's another place you can get legally, you know, legal um, stuff over BitTorrent now. It's Mini Nova. That's very nice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rad. Um, so I think that's it for our formal topics for the evening. Um, we've got a we've got a kicker. And uh, <laughs> it, it's a video. We won't play the video, but it will be in the show notes and it will be pasted in IRC. If Quake 1 were made today. But now tell me, I, I, caught, I didn't catch all for the jokes in the beginning. Just tell me about it. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, going through it, it, it starts with um, <clears throat> all the intro videos that you can't skip. Uh, console is especially bad with this sort of thing because th there's no way you can even hack it. E on PC, I resort to renaming files and things just so I don't have to watch the damn intro videos every time I, I load the game. Yes. Consoles, <laughs> you're just going to sit there and watch and they, and they overdo it in the Quake video. And then it starts out with uh, very limited settings for your graphics. And well, there's on and off. Yeah, yeah. It's on and off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, graphics on off. Uh, difficulty easy and simplified, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, then, and then the combat was... You know, shoot here to win. I think <laughs> uh, there was a pop up, and then and then it's like you're running the wrong way. Yeah, pro tip: you're going the wrong way, and uh, and then they just need a quick time event, and you're done. You've yeah, got everything. a quick time event to kill the boss. <laughs> uh, very boring, and yes. then and then they at the end they they finish off the video showing you how like real gamers play games, uh, proper Quake One style. You know, using oh, yeah. a grenade. One of those speed runs. Yeah, doing, using jumping. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. using grenades to jump through the secret areas, doing a speed yes. run of Quake. You know, it's, very nice. it's great. Yeah. yeah, and it was a good laugh too. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, that's it for the show, I think. So uh, That was brilliant, guys. We've got to do more shows on games. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, James from MyGaming, where you. can we find you? Uh, MyGaming.co.za or Twitter, James underscore E underscore S. Yeah, uh, if you can't yeah. remember that, go to MyGaming.co.za <laughs> yeah. and find his Twitter uh, out there. I'm there every day. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your job or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like I work there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and uh, if I may, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you right there. Mm. And if you are watching the show on YouTube, after the fact, if you were on our live stream, you would have had a chance to win. Oh, yeah. Two Mass Effect t-shirts are being given away. Thank you for interrupting me, Johan. Uh, yes. So, uh, yes. Not, I don't know if yeah, there's a nice shirt. Yeah, there's also artwork Jealous. of Shepard, but I don't want to break the hermetically sealed bag. It was uh, you know, done in the Normandy. And, at no, zero no, G, which Shepard is it? Is it male or female Shepard? Uh, male Shepard. Because I have a femme Shepard. Shepard, and I'm, I'm, I'm very... I'm very agitated by like the movies and things because I, I, I don't get my character. I want my character. Mm. <laughs> so if you want to really start, stand a chance to win some great prizes on our shows, join us for the live stream, live.ltnet.tv. But then also... Search shameless plug here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much to Luke for joining us. Uh, we didn't actually get to mention one of the other projects that you're involved in, which is, I don't know when last you contributed, but you're a contributor. I'll be contri contributing this weekend again. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, well, tell us about it briefly. It's the title. it's the, uh, the Eve Dev killboarding for if you guys play Eve. You've probably seen the killboards. They're everywhere. So I, I do the database dumping for you. So that new content that we just got given yesterday... Will be dumped soon. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need to whine at him because it's not fast enough, at don't whine at me. At, <laughs> at FRK, yeah, on Twitter. Yes. And any, anywhere else they can find you? Email, blog? Um, no blog, no email. I think just use the, the Twitter or try and find me on G. Okay. I'll cool. be there, yeah. Rad, rad. That's it for the show tonight. Remember to catch uh, our other Let's Talk Network shows, LT Afrikaans. Is that showing tomorrow night, Johan? Uh, we are going to try our best, yes. Okay. We cool. will be. Here. I know things have been hectic because Cecilia oh, has been, been away. 
Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So uh, let's talk Afrikaans. We've got let's talk possibilities. Uh, I think every other week uh, we've got let's talk sports. sports. Um, so do look out for those things. Uh, if you're interested in any of that stuff, do check us out. Thank you very much.